Mark, it's been um, over 30 years now since the good, the bad, and the rugby was, was really sorry to remind you of that timeline. Yes. Yeah. I was a TV journalist working for TV New Zealand and, and um, working for TV as a journalist was a serious business and I'd always shoot, had these off cuts and stuff like that. So I put them all together and gave them to John Kerwin and you know, JK and I grew up together, we were at school together, so we were pretty good mates. So I gave him a video uh, at the end of the 88 Australia tour, which was the 87 World Cup in 88, all my off cuts. And he loved it, and he said, "Oh, mate, we should we should do this. Why don't we Why don't we make a VHS? You know." It, it was a special time in rugby. Um, you know, uh, sort of the late eighties, early nineties was sort of the last bastions of the amateur game, and just seeing guys like Foxy and and um, and Sean Fitzpatrick and John Kerwin and Gary Wetton and all those guys, Buck Shelford, you know, legends of the game in their natural habitat, if you like, just being themselves. What's really cool is, you know, talking to some of the sort of more recent All Blacks who talk about it as they used to watch it over and over when they were kids. That's really cool. You know, when, a, when, a, when an All Black legend says to you, oh, I mean, I used to watch that, I got that for Christmas and I just watched it till it wore out, you know, that, that, that's really cool. We had no idea it was groundbreaking because we weren't exposed to anything else. So, um, it's not like the internet existed. So it hadn't been done really in international rugby or rugby at, at all, you know, there hadn't been a sort of behind the scenes documentary. At that stage, and not because of the All Blacks behavior, but because there were no outlets, we didn't see the All Blacks do anything else. We just saw them train, play, and do interviews on, on the side of training pitches. And then I, I went away on the 88 tour of Australia and I was saying to JK, I said, this is, this is like a club team. It's just they're really good at rugby. <laughs> like the same personalities, the same, the same sort of behaviours, the same sort of thing as that we had, you know, at Marist. It was, it was just a better version of that, you know? It just felt like a good story. You don't know anything. You were the one that stuffed it up when we did get off the James. That was you. In so many ways, JK and I were so naive. You've got to remember JK got injured. And, so JK got injured in the third game on tour, I think. As he's getting stretched off, he, I saw him saw, say something to Foxy, and Foxy came running over to us and said, JK says, get the crew to follow him in the hospital. So the crew jumped in the car, drove behind the ambulance, and as JK's getting taken to the hospital, he's like, no, they're with me. Um, and they follow them into the operating theatre. I mean, he takes a lot of credit for this because, you know, having someone that was a current All Black that was invested in it, that's what made it work. You know, so JK and I probably go down as one of the um, least great eight, nine combinations in, in rugby. You know, I was number eight, he was a halfback. But we made quite good content together. <laughs>